Hey there, I'm Jackie Ferris. This week we are at Bellevue State Park at Bellevue Hall. Can you believe there's a castle inside of this mansion? It's true. We're going to tell you all about it. Get ready. The 302 is headed your way. Hey there, we are at Bellevue Hall at Bellevue State Park, and we're gonna learn about all the great things there are to see and do in this historic place. I'm joined now by Nick Madden, no relation to John or Steve. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me. First of all, tell us about the Bellevue Hall itself. It's a historic place. It's been around for a really long time. Yes, it's almost uh, 200 years old. It first started as a Gothic Revival Castle, completed in 1855 by Hanson Robinson. He was a wool merchant and the hall itself was called Woolton Hall back then. Um, it didn't change until William DuPont Jr. obtained it um, sometime in the 1930s. He obtained it from his father and his childhood home was Montpelier in Virginia and he wanted that. He did not get it when his father died so he changed this entire castle into a replica of Montpelier. Um, and it's been that way ever since. Now it's really amazing when you, you read about this place, he didn't just knock it down. I mean, it was an actual castle. Yep. How yep. did he, how did we get to this from that? Right, so th there were some parts that no longer exist, but for the most part, um, it was kind of almost uh, covered in a way. Um, there are some bits um, in the basement where the uh, structure can still be seen from the actual castle. Um, on certain tours you can actually get a sight of that. Um, but even the inside was changed for the most part, though some rooms are still original to the castle as well. Um, he really did a number on it though, it just didn't completely get knocked down, like you said. Now there was a little bit of drama. He didn't live here for a little while. He had to live elsewhere because of, I guess, how he got together with his uh, second wife, is that right? Uh, Margaret Osborne? I believe so. Yes. Uh, he, he, he did live here primarily. He also owned Fox Sketcher Farms um, and he was building a house for her out on the west coast. Um, unfortunately it was not completed before his death and then it kind of changed um, ownership and I don't believe it actually was ever completed. So a lot of his things are no longer here, right? Correct. When he passed away in 65, a lot of his children um, took most of his belongings, like furniture, wallpaper, even mantelpieces, they took out of this house and took it to their own places. Some of those um, mantelpieces and wallpaper were we, we were able to reobtain. Um, most of the pieces we were not able to though, so most of what's inside uh, is not original to what he had it as. So that's crazy. So his kids just came in and started pulling stuff everything. off the wall. Yes, I they see. did. Yes, they did. <laughs> so now it's uh, it's not a home. It's more for like events and things like that. Correct. It's a venue. Uh, Jeffrey A. Miller Catering. They run um, venues uh, events out of here, um, and they have a three season tent right next door where they'll have some things as well. Um, and they'll be here spring, summer, fall. You can do inside, you can do outside. Um, and they make it a very beautiful experience here. Now we do a lot of uh, shows at Winter Tour with a, mm -hmm. another branch of the DuPont yes. family. And one of the gentlemen over there, uh, Mark Nardone, t tells us that he got married here. So you have a lot of weddings yes. here. Yes, yes we do. A lot of weddings uh, pretty frequently. Um, over the years. They they do their own stuff now. Um, it's all run by them now, but they still have plenty of weddings both here at Caulfield Estate, which is also part of us, um, and they, they have some pretty incredible stuff and it's pretty memorable for them. And there are a lot of grounds, a lot of places yeah. where you can go. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, how big the property is and some of the natural beauty landmarks that you have here. Right, so when William DuPont Jr. was here, um, he really changed this estate into what you see today. He was an avid equestrian um, and he also loved tennis. Uh, some of the tennis courts here was built by, were built by him and his father who also loved tennis. Um, most of the horse related stuff you'll find here was by Junior. We have our main track 
um, which is a mile and one eighth long or nine furlongs if you're fancy. And that is a huge hub for a lot of our guests that come. You can exercise there, you can walk there. Um, there's picnic tables around it, pavilions that you can rent out, um, volleyball nets, uh, horseshoe pits. You also can go fishing in the small little pond that lays inside of this massive track. There's meadows, there's plenty of stuff to do just in that one track alone, which he built here and it's survived to this day. Um, there's also buildings like the figure eight barn, which was an indoor facility that he built for training horses um, when the weather was not nice enough for him to do it outside. Um, there was a Miami track that also was an indoor thing for thoroughbred horses that unfortunately is in um, not complete condition right now, some trees knocked down portions of it, but it was one of two in the nation of indoor thoroughbred tracks, um, and it was right here on property. Um, and there also find lots of barns on site or other smaller facilities that helped keep this estate for him self-sustaining. So he didn't really have to go very far to get what he wanted, both as leisure and for just everyday living. When you look around, it's just absolutely gorgeous. The different types of trees that you see, the way things yeah. have been set up. You can really tell that a lot of detail went into crafting the natural beauty uh, around the area. Yeah, it's it's kind of remarkable. It's like a seamless blend of both history and nature. Um, a, a, where we are standing right now is actually an arboretum that him and his father had created from trees coming from around the world um, that still survive today and it's, it's one of our uh, prized possessions here. Excellent. Sure. And we're going to talk a little bit more here at Bellevue Hall when we return. Hi, uh, I'm Loretta Spiegel. I'm with Rockwood Mansion, and you're watching The 302. Welcome back. It was such a hot day. We came in under the trees to talk a little bit more about this beautiful place. Now, I guess the DuPonts were kind of arborists, right? Yeah, they, they really collected and it passed on through their generations. The father and then the son continued the collection um, throughout their entire lives. It's amazing. When you look around the property, you have some really tall, you have oak, there's a willow tree, and I know that you have a, a really special feature that must be great with the brides, the, uh, the tree tunnel. Yeah, yeah, so the tree tunnel is over by, close to our nature preserve. Um, it's a tunnel of various trees. In the fall, they all turn yellow, and it's just a wonderful walk through. Our hay rides will go through that area as well, so when you're on the hay ride, you can see all around you, look up and see all this bright yellow fall colors. It's really pretty, it's, it's wonderful. I know we're, gonna, we're getting ready to have fall, as sad as it is. <laughs> um, talk to me a little bit about these hay rides. You know, what's the, what's the draw? What can we see? Right, so you can see pretty much a good chunk of the park. It's an hour long hay ride, and it will take you from our community gardens over by uh, Car Road, and it will take you all throughout here around the mansion. And then, like I said, it'll take you up. Uh, towards the nature center area and then you'll loop back around that kind of gets a perimeter view of the park itself Yeah, and I guess you get a history lesson while you're at it. No, it's actually leisurely It's leisurely the people come and they rent the whole wagon themselves and they are there with friends family and just have a great time in the park Sure, sure. Yeah. So if somebody wants to come and maybe, you know, wagons aren't their thing and they mm -hmm. want to strap on the sneaks and go for a cruise, it's a really walkable park. Can yeah. they do that? Oh, for sure, for sure. A lot of our trails are paved um, and making it very accessible for most people. Um, it's fairly even planed as well, so it's uh, not a lot of hills going on there. Um, and it's, it's very easy to maneuver. It's not a large park, so people will be able to get around it pretty easy without getting lost. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the natural programs that you have to complement all this beauty. Yeah, so a lot of our programs do, whether it be historical or natural, they will kind of uh, give you the full scope of what you can experience here. We have a lot of introductory nature uh, programs. This is a very uh, simplistic kind of park where people can come and not feel like they have to know where they're, how to hike or know how to backpack. They can come here, just relax and treat it like a normal park. Um, so a lot of our programs like uh, one of ours is Nature 101. It'll give you the basics of certain things you can find here in the park. Uh, and it's a series so that'll be throughout the year. We have our full moon hikes as well. Those are our nighttime programs where people can come 
and see the park after hours, which is a real treat for people, and they really take advantage of that. And it's a great program um, where you can walk around the park, hear all the nighttime residents, we call them, all the organisms that are here, and then, of course, see the beautiful moon. Um, and we'll have our historical ones as well, uh, where we'll, we can tour the house, uh, Bellevue Hall, we can tour Caulfield House as well. Um, or just a grounds tour in general where we can see where all the horse related buildings are and how the layout of the park uh, really helped William DuPont Jr. and how we use it today as well. Now you mentioned the horses. There are horses that actually are boarding in the buildings that, was, that were built back in the day. Yes, yeah, and the horses actually never stopped. Once he died, the horses still continued on past him um, and they're still active today. They're run by Wellspring Farms. Excellent. Yeah. We were talking a little bit earlier about all the natural beauty and you, you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, uh, the, seeing a fox whenever we were <laughs> off camera. Mm -hmm. You really do see it and, and you incorporate all of that into programs uh, like the Spotted Lantern Fly program that you have. Correct, yeah, so that's a recent one for us with the whole uh, uh, Spotted lanternfly, you know, coming into our area and causing a lot of problems. I want to bring awareness to that, so we introduced a program where we go and search for them. We don't typically uh, promote people um, harming nature. We wanted to be very respectful for it and not interrupt our ecosystems. This was sort of an exception because it was causing harm to what we love so much and what's natural here. Um, plus it was raising awareness of invasive species and how those can affect what we naturally see here. I can imagine that a lot of people probably signed up for that so they can figure out how to get yes, rid of them did. in their in their own oh, space. Of course, yeah, yeah. So talk to me, we're right in front of the uh, tennis courts. Mm -hmm. There's another vendor that takes care of the tennis courts as well. So if you're into tennis, this is also the place. To Correct. Go. Yeah. So they do have memberships. So you do. It is a month. It is a paid membership. Mm -hmm. um, and they have eight hard courts. They just introduced a pickleball court. If anyone's into that, and um, they are active from spring until fall. So the, and they're fairly popular. So you've got tennis, you've got horseback riding, and mm -hmm. you've got chill hiking. Of and, course. And you can ride a, on, a, on, a, on a hay wagon. You can ride on a hay wagon, you can go fishing, you can, there's exercise stations if someone's really trying to stay fit, there's picnic tables, there's, there's lots. Disc golf as well, that's okay. a big one for us. We have a full disc golf course here that people really go for as well. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about what you can see and do here at Bellevue State Park when we return. Hi, I'm Lee Reisenberg and you're here in the archives at the 302. Welcome back. We're at Bellevue State Park talking about all the things that are going on here and I thought I saw some kids earlier. So you have a summer camp here, right? We do. We have at least two summer camps running right now. We've got our recreational camp, which is our normal day camp. And we also, this week, have our junior fishing camp. That one will change week to week, and but still have some sort of nature-oriented uh, theme uh, blended in with it. So you guys are really focused on kid-friendly activities. Can you talk to me? What can kids do when they come here if there's no camp going on? Right, so there's lots of space for them. Uh, kids love to run. They can run around. We also have lots of playgrounds for them to uh, go and enjoy. It's a very kid uh, friendly space, meaning that it's, um, like I said before, it's, it's flat, it's easy to manage. Strollers are great here for families as well. There's picnic areas for them to enjoy a lunch at maybe with their family or friends. There's a lot of options for them here. Definitely. A lot of options for, for adults that have a lot of energy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we were talking earlier about disc golf. Now, what exactly is disc golf? So disc golf um, is like golf, but instead of golf balls, they're like frisbees, but they're heavier, so they're going to have weight to them. Um, and it's going to be set up just like a golf course where you'll start at a tee and you'll throw the disc to a metal basket. Um, it's got chains on it and you try to get the disc into the basket. And we do have a full course here, um, 18 holes, and it's quite popular with our guests. I can imagine mm -hmm. to get out there and see if you can actually make it into, into the basket. Yeah, it's, it's trickier than you would think. Sometimes uh, people take a couple tries to get a hole down and it does take them throughout the whole park as well. So it's a great 
different way of touring the park too. So I guess in regular golf, you do a lot of walking from hole to hole. So yes. from basket to basket, you can get a good workout. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned fishing for kids, but adults can fish here too. For what sure. kind of uh, fishing, uh, I guess, atmosphere area do you have? It's a very quaint pond we have in the middle of our track. Um, anybody can go if they want to. Uh, 16 to 64, I believe, need a fishing license to fish here. Um, and they can find simple things. It's a very relaxed pond, so it's, there's not going to be uh, running, uh, rushing water anywhere. It's just a, a straight up uh, pond where you can find sunnies, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, and bluegill. So, I don't know much about fish, so a sunny, is that like a big fish or a little fish? I mean... It's, it's going to be about like that size. Okay. The, mar the bass might get a bit bigger, um, but they'll generally be around this size or, or a little bit smaller. And then, of course, you'll have the, the babies as well, which will be super tiny. But. So, if a sportsman is having a, a rough day, he can just come out here and spend a little and bit of time? Make, yes, yes. Now, you have to have your license before you come here. You Correct. can't get it here, right? You cannot get it here. Okay. You can get it online. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you also also have some friends that help you out quite a bit. Tell us about your friends. Yeah, we do. We have a, uh, a volunteer group called the Friends of Bellevue, and they we work together to really uh, keep this park alive and keep it running and keep it fresh. Um, so one of the ways that they do that is by helping out with some of our gardens, and they also sponsor our concert series, which is our summer concert series um, on our main stage on our band shell. Um, and they're a big help for that and do a lot there and you can join them to help with that effort as well. When we talk about concerts, what kind of music are we talking about? You'll get a variety. So it does typically run from June through August and it will be every Thursdays and Sundays and you'll have anything from uh, uh, like Jimmy and the Parrots, which is a Jimmy Buffett tribute or Beatles. You'll also get some uh, a reggae or classic rock. Um, and uh, you'll get some smaller bands as well, a single person band who writes his own songs, he's a singer-songwriter, um, and there'll be also some Irish songs in there as well, or Irish bands, um, or Celtic that people might be interested in. So it sounds like the kind of thing where, you know, it's a really nice afternoon. Uh, do you have to bring your own lawn chair? Or? Yeah, you bring everything yourself. Um, it is free aside from park admission. Um, you can bring your chairs, you can bring food, um, you can bring family and friends, however many you want, as long as you get a parking spot. They do tend to be crowded, mm -hmm. um, and some people do uh, get their spots in the morning. So it's it's quite a popular one for us. Kind of like pool chairs mm -hmm. in pool the morning. Pool chairs or beach chairs, too. <laughs> you yes. got to get mm -hmm. out there. So talk to me a little bit about the perfect day for you. If you, you know, you're at the Wawa getting your coffee and everything, and somebody says, hey, what should I do if I want to come out and visit you? What's the perfect day? Perfect visit? I mean just walking around it's such a diversity here from the, f the forests we have, the meadows, the ponds, the historic sites here and it's such an easy trek. I mean you can get so much in just one 30 minute walk here and your day will be made. And you kind of get a little slice of everything. It really kind yeah. of, you have a, a, like a well-rounded mission mm -hmm. here. Can you talk a little bit about you know um, what you strive to do for your visitors? For me personally, my, my mission is to educate them both on the history and the natural aspects of the park. So we will have programs or I will just interact with the guests themselves and you know, if they have questions about the park, I will be there to answer them. Um, or just let them know about what they're seeing in the park. If you know, someone's questioning something they see, I'll chime in and be like, hey, just so you know, this is where this is coming from, you know? Yeah. I can imagine this probably is a great place to work. Oh, it's so much fun. It's yeah. so much fun. So if somebody wants to come out, you mentioned there's a, a fee, Correct. a park fee. What yes. is that? So there's a daily fee that you can, it's by car, not by person, uh, $4 for in-state and $8 for out-of-state. There are annual passes which also differ between in and out-of-state as well. There's some senior passes, lifetime passes, veteran passes as well. So we can jam all of our friends in a car and then save some money if we need as to. As long as it's safe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if somebody wants to check out, you know, programs, times, events, where do they go? They can check out our website um, and look up Bellevue State Park through the Delaware State Park website and our programs should be all there. You'll also find us on Facebook and most of our programs will be posted there as an event. Um, and sometimes on our Instagram we'll be posting some things as well, both programs and we'll just be posting some um, educational content on our Instagram as well. Excellent. Well, Nick, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Us. Thanks for coming. We'll be right back.
information on Bellevue State Park or on Bellevue Hall, visit destateparks.com. That'll do it for this episode of the 302. We're going to leave you with some close-up shots of Horseshoe Garden, named for the DuPont's love of horses. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. Tell them you saw it on the 302.